I'd like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Seeing none, if you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. This is excellent. It's almost as if we pay people to be here because we never get this kind of a turn. <coughs> we have some special recognitions this evening, so I'll turn it over to Dr. Brunel for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So tonight really is a very exciting night. Anytime we have special guests, not only leadership but students to recognize is really wonderful. So the first one to be recognized is Jarrett Sargent. He is here with his mom, and Jarrett is currently the valedictorian of the class of 2019. So Jarrett is the selected individual to join Mr. Hanfield and I at the Worcester County Superintendent's Scholars Luncheon in January, and he is most deserving to do so. So he's currently the class valedictorian with the highest GPA of 4.844. He has taken nine advanced placement courses, is a member of the Science Olympiad and math team. His non-academic interests include boys varsity soccer, outdoor and indoor track, and working at Camp Invention, a summer camp focused on STEM activities. Jared is interested in a career in biology-centered research, and I know that he mentioned to be WPI in some other schools, but very excited and congratulations to you, Jared. Wow, you couldn't get a 5.0? <laughs> give me time, give me time. Jared, did you want to say anything? <laughs> no, no. Is it okay if I ask if they want to ask you any questions? Are you up for that? Excellent. Does anyone have any comments or questions? But Jared, that's outstanding. I've never seen a GPA that high. Mm -hmm. While okay. doing so many extracurriculars, that's, I mean, I think I've said it before, I always thought 4.0 is as high as you could get. So, <laughs> come a long way since I graduated. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, you've got another example of how our students really make Auburn proud and you know, if there's anything we can do to support your last six months in high school, please let us know. But I'm very impressed that you have time to do anything other than study. So, well done. <laughs> well, congratulations. And I have a question. What is your interest as you go on in school? Um, I'd like to do biological research um, with Blackboard uh, Medical. Please. Awesome. We could use people like, like you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Good job. Do you sleep at all, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> if so, when? Like naps during the day? How does this all work? <laughs> I bet you do. I'm tired just reading all of this. No, congratulations. What, what a great accomplishment. And I'm so glad that you could make it here tonight so that we could personally congratulate you. And it makes what we're doing worthwhile when we see great kids like you come in. <clears throat> And through the chair, congratulations to you too, Mom. It's always a, a family effort and role modeling and such. So congratulations and great job, Jared. Thank you. So the next uh, exciting honor to share with you is our Project 351 representative. As you know, annually on Martin Luther King weekend, from each of the 351 middle schools in Massachusetts, a student is selected to go down and do service learning. So I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Desto, principal of the middle school, and then invite him to um, bring Sydney Mercadanti up, who is here with her mom and dad as well, and introduce her to us. First of all, congratulations, Jared. 4.88. <laughs> That's exactly what my GPA was in high school, if you add up all four years. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. So um, Dr. Brunel mentioned a little bit about what Project 351 is. The 351 stands for all of the communities in the state. So each community gets to send one eighth grade student uh, to this program. And it was started by Governor Patrick maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, as an opportunity to give kids at a very critical age in their lives an opportunity to show the great value of community service. So, you know, I've done this many times before, but not knowing the students at Auburn Middle School all that well yet, when I first got the call back in September to nominate a student, 
I had to put the word out to several key people on the staff who know the students best and ask them, you know, who do you, give me three or four names of kids who have done a lot of community service, who would be great representatives for Auburn, and, you know, sent it out to several staff members. And I figured if I got three or four names, I could sit down with Mr. Carlson, and at that point we could figure it out from there. Well, there was only one name that showed up on every single staff member's list. They all sent us three, four, five names, but this name was on every one of their lists. So when Mr. Carlson and I sat down, it was a very easy choice to select Sydney. Sydney Mercadanti, she's the daughter of Joseph and Mary, who are in, in the back. And, and as Dr. Brunel said, congratulations to you as well, because these things rarely happen by accident. Just a few, Mr. Scobie, you're going to be tired again. <laughs> um, just a, a few things that Sydney's done. Um, she's been a summer counselor at the North Amer uh, American Martyrs Church summer camp. She's done the Relay for Life, the Spooky Spectacular at Swanson Road School. She helped me and Mr. Carlson, or Mr. Carlson and me, with schedule pickup and orientation this year. Helped us with Parents Night this year. Um, assisted our, with our food drive and putting together food baskets. She has helped with Math Night at Auburn Middle School. The Sweetheart Social at Packachog, which I'd better get an invitation to this year. <laughs> um, the Popcorn Bulletin, which was a really nice farewell that they put together for Mr. Gagnon upon his retirement. Uh, she's helped create posters for the Purple Project, preparing our school for Chris Heron's presentation, um, and has taken part in the Auburn School Supply Foundation, where she had to stand outside of Shaw's and sell lollipops in turn for donations of school supplies to give children in grades uh, 1 through 7. She's been in the N National Junior Honor Society for two years, and the Student Council this year as well. Uh, similar to you, Jared, I don't know where she's got, she finds the time to do it all and maintain incredible grades. When I looked at her record, I just, my eyes popped out and I said, wow, she's a really good student too on top of all of this. And probably to me, uh, most importantly, she represents our school incredibly well. You know, you, there are certain kids when you see them and you say, just do that. And it's a simple way. That's the way you want your kids to behave and Sydney is certainly one of them. So congratulations, Sydney, and thank you for making us proud. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm thinking that's a no. But Sid Sydney, great job. We're, we're all very proud of you. Any comments for Sydney? Just come back and tell us how it was. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when keep, people come back, they uh, it sounds like it's a really amazing day, so we look forward to hearing about it. Good. Um, I remember you when you were in preschool, so this is very exciting to see. Mm -hmm. um, you've turned into such a great volunteer and an active person in our community. Um, so I second what uh, Dot said, come back and tell us all about it. So thank you. Thank you. I don't think we could send a better representative. And thank you for, for choosing her, Mr. Desto, and thank you for all your efforts, Sydney. I'm very proud. And the good news continues. So we have learned, um, as you know, about the Unified Sports Program at the high school. And in fact, um, they've just come, three of the students who are here tonight, to be recognized from the jamboree that took place at Auburn High uh, and ended just a short time ago. So if I could have Brenna, St. Pierre, and Emma Ganley come up to the podium together first. And perhaps if anyone <coughs> else who's here from Unified Sports, I see Ms. DeLuca back there. I think I see Ms. Kozik. If you all want to just come and join, and anyway, at least why don't you come on up to we'll recognize everybody. I think our scorekeeper is there too, Mr. DeLuca, isn't he? <laughs> Didn't he do scorekeeping today, your son? <laughs> so we were recently notified, as you know, about the great honor that Auburn High received for its unified sports program. But the good news in that regard continues to come. So we recently learned through Kathy Lutz of Special Olympics that Brenna St. Pierre and Emma Ganley have been selected to travel to Washington, D.C. to represent Special Olympics Massachusetts for what they term Hill Day to share their impact stories about what it means to play unified sports at Auburn High and to be part of the Unified Champion Program with their representatives and legislatures. So it's a wonderful opportunity for these young ladies to represent not only themselves, Auburn High, unified sports, but also our belief in the Auburn Public Schools that every single child is the best child in matters. So congratulations to Brenna and Emma for this distinct honor that they so deserve.
see who young ladies have anything prepared, any type of a speech. <laughs> no? Is it okay if we ask you questions? Yes. All right, great. Any questions or comments? <laughs> no. I hope that you had a really great time today, and you, we'd also like to hear what it's like in D.C. if you want to come back and tell us all about the day on the hill. Yeah. How was the jamboree today? That's good. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I think it was a long day. Ron had a field trip today, too. So that went on straight. <laughs> So how long will you be in Washington, D.C.? Uh, three days. Yeah. Three days? And I hope they're putting you up at the White House, so <laughs> <laughs> you get the best accommodations. So additionally, and actually, um, Ms. Leeperbo was out in the hallway trying to find an indiscreet way to come in, so maybe through the chair, she could just come right on in. That's quite okay. <laughs> I want you to be recognized. <laughs> Join them up there. <laughs> so another honor associated uh, with this program that we received as part of the Special Olympics Unified Champion School, they're forming an inclusive group of youth leaders to represent the region as advocates, advisors, and participants in a brand new unique leadership development training opportunity. So they're selected 12 youth leaders with and without intellectual disabilities, aged 14 to 22, who will serve as youth ambassadors for a two year period in a role focused on training, engagement, and activation. And one of our own, Elise Whittemore, is one of the two students from the Northeast who will represent us. And Elise is here, she's a junior at Auburn High School and will represent us, I know, in outstanding fashion. So congratulations to Elise. Too. And if I can just introduce the adults that are here. So we have Miss Allie DeLuca, who was probably the originator of this program, Bringing Unified Sports, several years ago, made a proposal to Dr. Lose and I, Mr. Hanfield and others, Mr. Davis, to, to bring Unified Sports to us. And since then, as you know, it started with Bar a bocce tournament, uh, basketball, and now we have track as well. And the two coaches for our basketball program are here, both teachers at Auburn High. We have Miss Nicole Lieberbo and Miss Sam Kozik. So thank you to all of you and for your leadership that you show to all of our kids. Thanks for supporting us. Thank you. And did any of the adults have anything that they want to share, or are you good with just answering some questions? <laughs> I think we're fortunate. We have a really great school community. Uh, it was easy to bring in Plank to Auburn because we had a really good foundation for it. We had a Rockets to Rockets program, student council, a lot of involved kids in the community. So, um, yeah, I had the idea, but it took a lot of people to make it happen. So, we're lucky we have that in our community support across the board. I think the, the community is, is fortunate to have all of you taking part in this and for coming up with the idea, don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. It's just an awesome thing. So many awesome things happen in the Auburn schools, but I'd have to say uh, um, above and beyond all of them, this is the one that always gets me. I just love the program. And after I got done watching the Patriots game that night and saw it on the news, it was, it was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it touches me every time, but to, to be recognized the way that you were, um, totally deserving, and um, we appreciate so much what you do. It's just, it's it's heart heartwarming, and um, I'm glad that you could all make it tonight. And if we could just have everyone who was um, recognized this evening just kind of walk up here, and so we can personally congratulate you. We like to do that on occasion. Even you, Sydney, <laughs> Jared, <laughs> come on up. <laughs> who wants to be first? <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Good job. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Best of luck. Congratulations. Great job. Are you excited to grow up? Yeah. Yeah. You have to work hard. I can't wait to get out of here. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that worked good. Thank you. Did you have any idea that's going to take off? Congratulations. No. No. It's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th
he didn't know what to do. He was like, he, he's a real, he's an actual <laughs> rap, so he didn't know. He's like, what should I be calling? Like, oh, I'm just going to call the sheets. So I was giving him a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Have a nice night. <laughs> Hi. Hi guys, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks so much. Good night. Thank you. Bye, Mary. Bye. Just love that program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I could just interject something, I was talking to Allison before I got in, and I had spent part of the day reading news stories about young people being bullied at their schools and how tragic it was for them. And I'm thinking this program goes a long way to preventing that mm -hmm. because they see these children as equal to them. Mm -hmm. They're just other children. Mm -hmm. They're not someone to be bullied and made fun of. And I think this helps a lot. Yeah. It's a great program. It really is. I would just add to that quickly. My first experience um, with anything like this in Auburn was when we did the, the tour of all the schools. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And some of the special ed students and regular ed students were interacting. and and um, one of them was playing Santa Claus and giving out gifts and it was just mm. I'll never forget it mm. it's awesome so it was great. It was I won't great. say any more or else I'll crack <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and moving on to the superintendent's memo so a couple of other recognitions before we move on to um, budget presentation so Mr. Desto our principal at Auburn Middle School he has been asked, asked excuse me by the MSAA to be part of the interview and judging process for the assistant principal of the year uh, nominees so he's going to be spending the morning of the 15th in Franklin doing that so I appreciate and congratulate Mr. Desto for being asked and his willingness to do so I think anytime we go out um, on activities such as these and many leadership team members have I think it just helps to shine another bright light on the Alpine Public Schools so congratulations to Greg. Don't let them steal him away. <laughs> I, I'm on it. Um, additionally, wanted to make you aware that from Swanson, uh, Sarah Canella, library media specialist, she's been approved to present a 50-minute workshop titled Deep Digital Recording on Device-Based Tests. And that's going to happen at the 2019 Mass School Library Associ Association Conference on Sunday, March 31st. Um, Sarah does a, a great job. She's willing to tackle any task. Um, and always committed to a professionalism and to the work in her school. So congratulations and kudos to Sarah as well. Absolutely. I'm sorry, where is that being held? It's at the Mass School Library Conference. I don't know. I can Does get for say? you where it is. It's on Sunday the 31st. But we can find, I don't recall where it's being held actually. Hmm? No, I'm not sure. I'm just curious. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to attend. <laughs> oh, yes. Student representatives report. Another one? <laughs> has, has there been a lot since yesterday then? <laughs> All right, let's do it. Uh, so I'll start very, very quickly. There was a field trip to the New England Aquarium by several science classes and um, the quiz show with competition that I reported about last night. Uh, we ended up going one and one losing buzzer beater in the final question to Millbury. All right. Um, Mr. Hanfield and I have kept in touch about the substitute, the lockdown procedures, and how to inform teachers who are coming in for the day to um, know what's going on in the event that there is a situation where we need to have a lockdown. Um, we have reviewed our substitute folders and re realized they need updating in some areas of building procedures. We are in the process of revamping them to reflect our most up-to-date security protocols. And while we are in the process of updating subfolders, we will be giving them a handout explaining our different protocols and ask that they return them at the conclusion of the school day. So the substitutes will have more of an understanding of what to do in the event that something would happen. And I don't know, I think Ryan touched base on this a little bit in the health and PE classes. We're having the ALICE training with the hands-on. So today uh, was the educational portion of it where they taught us or kind of showed us examples of different scenarios and what to do and what Alice really means and then tomorrow we're doing more like um, hands-on activities so we're learning how to barricade and how to flight like lock down so more like hands-on tomorrow so how do you think the students are, are reacting so far pretty 
Well, yeah, I think it's better to focus small rather than do a whole school thing because people can have more opportunity mm -hmm. to ask questions and it can be taken more seriously because I feel like if we did a whole school thing, some people might not take it as seriously as uh, more focused. Excellent. Well, we look forward to an update after um, some of the live activities. And thank you for that report. And just to backtrack, are there any citizens' comments? Seeing none. Did anyone else have any questions for the student representatives? Is Brian staying again tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have homework. Uh, I missed two classes, so I have to catch up. <laughs> I actually, I, actually did, I did have one question, but I, just so that you guys can hear, I would be interested to see how the subfolder um, works out, and if it's a good pilot program, and we can look at doing it at the other schools, so you can feel like you were a leader of change. Yeah. So. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank now you. you can really go. <laughs> thank Thanks for that report. So with your permission, I'm going to go and join, or we're going to go down and join uh, leadership, and we'll go through the remaining presentations for budget. Sounds good. Thank you. It's the first one? Yeah. This is quite a, quite a tough act to follow, but... <laughs> We'll do our best. Um, good evening. It's a pleasure for me to begin this evening's portion of the Building Principles budget presentation. As you heard last night from our central office administration, every decision made centers around the district's strategic plan, our core values, and the Auburn Public Schools vision for our students. Tonight, Mrs. Stanick, Dr. Chamberlain, and I will present some of the many accomplishments made last year, as well as our rationale for the proposed budget you'll be presented with this evening. I'd like to start with a quote from Malala Yousafzai. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. It is our belief as educators that within each child there is a voice, <coughs> excuse me, waiting to be empowered to make the real change in the world. One word, one book, one person at a time. It's under this pretext that we'll share the five overarching goals of our district's plan as it relates to our budget. The first of these is teaching and learning. Over the course of the last year and moving into this year, we've seen great strides in seeking out robust curricula to challenge our pre-K through five students. Most recently, our new Elevate Science curriculum has provided our students with aligned programmatic tools that not only teach science standards using rich, diverse media, leveled readers, texts, and labs, but also provide students virtual lab experiences and extend their learning while strengthening their understanding of physical science, earth science, and life science as it relates to technology, engineering, and the design process. All teachers, as you heard last night from Dr. Lose in grades K through two, as well as the reading specialists and special educators at Swanson have been using ECRI, the Enhanced Core Reading Instruction, to support and strengthen our early literacy skills. Additionally, much work has gone into researching and seeking, selecting Tier 3 programming for our more significant students. This work has resulted in coherent and aligned instruction through new programs, equals, aspire, and pathways. In each of these new programs, as well as those in their second and third year of implementation, a consorted effort has been made to address the many challenging and diverse learners within our schools. Our English language learner paraprofessionals have sought to integrate components of the programs that specifically address the needs of this population through varied texts, language-based learning, and iPad apps to reinforce grade level skills while developing the vocabulary and language acquisition they need. Similarly, our special educators, reading specialists, and math paraprofessionals have continuously explored and refined the materials, methodologies, and strategies to ensure that every child is meeting their greatest potential. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the refinement and expansion of our school-wide second step program taught by our guidance counselors at each of our schools in conjunction with our classroom teachers. This addresses some of the social-emotional learning needs of our students. 
um, while looking at new and innovative components of this program as well as social emotional learning tools that have been used to strengthen our school communities. As one of our core values, making data informed decisions is a driving force of much of what we do, but it's in that same vein that we always take into account the whole child and the individual needs of each learner. In our work with The Hill, we've refined our dating meeting process to have consistency throughout our schools, ensuring not only that we're monitoring the progress of all students, but also ensuring that we have appropriate and targeted interventions in place for continued <coughs> success. Regarding peer observations, with the plethora of curriculum that we've had, uh, some of our expert uh, expertise in each of our classes varies and we've made it commonplace to promote at each of our buildings and throughout the district observations to expand and share methodologies, strategies, skills, and best practices for all of our staff, as well as provide support <coughs> to any teacher or new teacher that is seeking professional learning opportunities. Regarding educator evaluation, this past year, DESE released an updated Massachusetts model system for educator evaluation rubric and as such the leadership team has worked in conjunction with teachers to discuss these changes have made slight modifications to our teach point evaluation forms we've streamlined our formative evaluation process and refined our summative evaluations always keeping in mind the focus and importance of the conversation and the tools ability to promote growth and stronger educators as well as leaders with similar high expectations across the district and finally the leadership team collectively and frequently continues to meet to conduct learning walks in each building. This provides us the opportunity to have professional discussions around instruction and student engagement. And this time has also provided some valuable calibration in the leadership's expectations across the district and continues to strengthen us as district leaders. In closing, I've shared just a few of the many accomplishments that we've made in the past year and we look forward to many improvements going forward. At this time I'll invite Dr. Chamberlain to the microphone to continue. Good evening. Nice to see all of you. Thanks for having us. Um, so as you've heard last night and, and you'll hear again tonight that technology is embedded in everything we do. Um, so just to touch on a few of the newer things that we're working on and are happening in the buildings. You've heard a lot about PowerSchool. Um, and that being our new student information uh, system. But we really appreciate that we've gotten this new system and we're thankful that we've, um, teachers, principals have received training um, relating how to use that. We just had some report card training. Our report cards will be new and that requires a new um, input process for the teachers so they've received their training on that. Our special education teachers and preschool teachers are getting some training around now how they'll do progress reports because that will also go through there. So a lot of um, training is happening, but we're happy to have the support to do that and we think that the product is going to be excellent for our families and for our students. Um, along with that, we're also, our web page continues to be a little bit of a work in progress. We're all getting up to speed with that. We're very happy it's ADA compliant. Um, it offers a lot more than our previous web page did, I think, just as far as the structure of it. It's a lot more easy to access, so we've all been working with getting up to speed with that so that we can, you know, continue to be better about sharing um, information with staff and our families. Um, <clears throat> something interesting that we're very excited about having, having is a streamlining of our student logins. So I don't know if you've ever tried to teach a five-year-old how to log in <laughs> with a username and a password. <laughs> Now do that with 25 of them. <laughs> it's a process. Um, but we've had a lot of support from our tech department to find a solution to this because, you know, we have um, for both wonders and math and now even science, students have access to online learning. But they have to be able to get in there. Um, so there is a process to streamline those logins where once the children log in to the places that they need to go, they can scan a QR code and that becomes their access to all of those programs. So now when they go back to go into Go Math, they scan the QR code and they can automatically get in there. So that's coming and our technology uh, people have been working diligently to get the kids in input into that. So that is super exciting, particularly if you're a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <I> bet. 
<laughs> and certainly we are um, at all the elementary schools we're very appreciative of, of the technology media specialists that we have in our buildings and what they've been able to do for us um, and certainly that continues to really develop our students skill in the area of technology related to digital citizenship as well as online safety what's a good password look like how do I make one right so we even start teaching them that very early on um, <clears throat> they're also in both in all schools um, working to connect to content so not only are they teaching the ins and outs of how do I run an iPad how do I research where do I go but now if I have a particular um, focus how do I get information on that so it's very exciting we saw some second graders really researching some animal research through the San Diego Zoo and how do I find information and then having a graphic organizer to kind of collect that information so even as young as first and second grade they're beginning to do some real research which is great um, and we're also looking forward to this um, <clears throat> project lead the way which our media specialists have been working on writing a grant for which will bring engineering and hands-on learning in a new way. It's a, it's a program that um, is through WPI that will be very exciting for our kids. So we're thankful to have the media specialists that can help kind of facilitate that and bring that into the classroom. So a lot of exciting things happening with technology in our schools. And community partnership continue to be a hallmark of the Auburn Public Schools. Um, we can't do what we do without uh, all the connections we have to our community partners and they like us believe it does take a village to raise a child right we can't do it ourselves so we continue to have collaborations with the police department the fire department auburn youth and family u inc the auburn mass pto has been wonderful to us rh whites our chamber of commerce we have collaborations with the district attorney <clears throat> and they include they touch on topics like halloween safety fire safety <clears throat> i'm sorry cultural enrichment programming they provide volunteer options, grant awards, cyber safety. They talk to kids and families about safety at home. Um, and certainly, I would be remiss to not mention our school resource officer, who is always a resource for us in so many ways. Uh, officer Kennedy is wonderful, and he continues to make sure that we have a very strong connection to our safety team when it comes to fire drills and lockdowns and all those things through the ALICE training that we've learned. Um, but it does take everyone together to make all of that work. And finally, community service learning projects could remain alive and well at all the schools. Um, sometimes at Swanson Road, they're student-driven and developed, um, but we, we um, continue to have food collections, candy drives, connections, a lot of connections to um, active duty military, where letters or poems or uh, pen pal kind of things. Um, reaching out to families in need, ways to improve our schools, and to help to connect them to our local state and our world community. So we do see it, that it does take a village to raise a child, and we're so appreciative of all the resources we have. So I'll turn it over now to Mrs. Stanek for Health, Wellness, and Safety. Good evening, everyone. The safety of our students and staff is a top priority throughout the district. There is a continued emphasis on the training and the ALICE techniques with staff. The safety teams thoroughly review practices and ensure we are all well equipped for any and all emergencies. Student safety encompasses not only physical safety, but the social and emotional safety of our students. As you know, the social and emotional needs of our children is a growing concern that we are all committed to supporting. Our guidance staff continues to provide weekly lessons through the use of the Second Step program. During the school day, they provide targeted interventions for a wide range of social, emotional concerns and behaviors. In addition to whole class and small group instruction, they provide individual, individual meetings for students and families and parents to discuss and address unique needs and circumstances. They have and plan to conduct family presentations on anxiety, screen safety, and other social emotional concerns. To promote health and wellness throughout our community, our nursing staff collaborates with various partners for dental health and safety as well as global needs through our elementary school blood drive with our partnership with the American Red Cross. Community partners support our nursing staff with the annual hearing and vision screenings. Recently, the nursing staff has been utilizing an anxiety monitoring app for identified students to monitor their emotional needs and well-being. 
hand washing, sneezing, and coughing techniques are shared on a regular basis <laughs> to promote healthy habits to minimize the spread of those lovely germs. Creative approaches to physical education with ties to science through force and motion lessons and ties to healthy eating through survivor-like programming have formed greater ties to the classroom curriculum and lifelong habits. Playground painting and new equipment on the playgrounds have provided additional opportunities for physical safety for all of our students. Ensuring smooth transitions for our students continues to be a priority for the leadership team. Well thought transitional plans support the emotional needs of our students and often lessen anxiety for many. We are thrilled to be able to expand the Kindergarten Readiness Camp again this year to three weeks. We received lots of positive feedback from parents and staff and look forward to the continued success of this program. Not only will we continue to provide to school to school visits, we look forward to creating and updating welcome videos for students and families as well as Skype opportunities between schools. Targeted transition plans for specific students are created in collaboration with the school psychologist, guidance counselors, and principals. Additional visits during the school day have been possible through the use of Rocket One, our district van. Families are also invited to participate in additional visits and meet with new staff. Each principal reaches out to new families to welcome them, gather information about any needs of their child or their families, answer questions and provide insight into our district and schools. The transition subcommittee is also working on additional resources and supports that we as a district can provide to new families. Thank you for your support which enables us to provide our students and families with excellence like we saw at the beginning of our meeting. My colleagues and I will now share our elementary school budgets which are needed to sustain our mission, vision and goals. So, for the Packachog school budget, it is level funded with the exception of classroom supplies, which, ha which has a slight increase due to the increased but prices, as well as a decrease in printing supplies. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Chamberlain to present her budget. Uh, likewise, for the Bryn Mawr budget, we are primarily level funded. We did have a bit of a jump in classroom supplies. Um, we have an additional number of students compared to Pakachag, a little bit over 30. Uh, so it's a little bit larger than their increase, but we also saw um, a bit of a decrease in the printing uh, line item as well. Other than that, we're level funded. And in that same vein, we're level funded at Swanson Road. You may note a couple changes, one in textbooks. Um, that will go to the district funds um, in terms of getting any of the social studies books or any of those that are needed um, for the upcoming year. And a slight increase in the guidance supplies, that's to help with our social emotional learning initiatives as well as uh, support our PBIS initiatives. Before I go any further, are there any questions for either, um, any of us regarding that? Okay. Um, we are proposing a few increases in staffing, and our staff requests are as follows. At Pakachog Elementary School, a .5 permanent building sub. At Bryn Mawr School, a .5 permanent building sub as well. And also three full-time ABAs. These are for students that have IEP needs. And at Swanson Road, uh, based on numbers, we're requesting one full-time fifth grade classroom teacher. And due to increased needs uh, for social emotional, one full time guidance counselor. As always, our vision is to educate and prepare students for the opportunities and challenges of a changing world. That concludes our presentation. Are there any questions or? Any questions or comments? Like? <coughs> Thank you for your presentation. It was great. There was always. Um, I actually just have a question about how you allocate the use of the permanent subs. Is it really just first come first serve or would you target these folks in specific subject areas? Or the intention of the building subs is really um, 
to support classrooms where we don't have a substitute for that day. Having someone that's familiar with the school, the staff, the students, the curriculum will allow us to be able to fill those positions if a substitute isn't available. Okay. Of course, there'll be a schedule that would be created for those substitutes in the event that we don't have staff out for the day okay. and okay. use them accordingly. Yeah. Have you had a lot of trouble getting subs? Is that is that the reason? Because I think this is new to Auburn, uh, a building-based sub. This is fairly new. Um, in looking at the percentage of substitutes that we're able to have with the district this size, being able to have substitutes in our building as needed has presented some problem. Um, hoping that having a permanent substitute in the building to alleviate some of that so that we don't have to use other support staff which then impact other students and other learning environments. And how do you vision, because that's a point five is a half a day, right? Correct. So sure. how do you envision doing that when you need them for a whole day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think between Packetchug and Bryn Mawr we, would, we, have, we don't have a, a firm system worked out but we certainly, the, pro the primary goal would be to cover classroom teachers. So that's, that's where the first allocation would go. And I will tell you that Mrs. Stanek and I collaborate. We talk every single day. So I know that we can figure out the right way to make that balance so that we both, it, it wouldn't be that I would get somebody for the half day and she would get them for the afternoon kind of thing. It's a shared cost between buildings, but perhaps she doesn't have any teachers out, but I do. So I would say that this sub would come to cover the classroom teacher. And likewise, if that was in her case, the, the sub would go to her building. Oh, so they, they, they're not <coughs> particularly assigned to only PAC or only Bryn Mawr? No. It, they would be no, flexible I, I mean, for the district? I kind of thinking this would be one person that would then, we would kind of divide up based oh. on where the, where the need would be um, on any given day, making sure the primary um, goal being to cover the classroom teachers. I can say I think it's a great idea. Um, I know the biggest feedback I get from parents is, I've had three different subs in my kids' classroom this week with seven-year-olds or five-year-olds. So that's a pretty big issue. Um, so I think it's a great idea. What qualifications are you looking for with this? So you're, I'm guessing you're going to try to hire someone for this one position and share between the two lower elementary schools? Yes. Yes. Hoping at least a bachelor's degree and someone with, you know, you might get someone with a, a, a teaching certification that, yeah. you know, Get, can get familiar with the curricula, but doesn't necessarily want to be in the position of having all the planning that goes along yeah. with that all the time. Um, but if we could have someone that begins to know our kids, knows the structure of the day, mm -hmm. right? When's lunch? When? Where do I go for this? Who do I ask for that? It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, and a lot of the wasted time out of it. So, and a familiar face for the kids. Very, very they, makes a big difference. Age, yep. Yeah. Great. Any other comments or questions? I had a question. It's probably better for Mr. Bouvier, though, um, about the, what the power school looks like at that level, at that age group. I know in the middle school we have, I mean, I can watch my child's progress minute by minute. Is that really going to be how it rolls out in the um, elementary school? For them, right, right now, parents don't, wouldn't have access to the portal at those grade levels anyway. There's really nothing other than attendance that they would see. Um, Power school at the elementary school primarily is for the teachers for in, in, um, importing the grades on their standards, okay. so they can they can get reflected on the report cards and taking daily attendance and that type of stuff. So eventually, will report cards be through that program only, or will they still get the paper version of a report card? I mean, are we trying to go digital on everything eventually, or? I, we haven't made decisions to go completely digital yet. Okay. I think, you know, eventually, probably. Probably it will be. It seems the way things are moving, but um, yeah. it's not what we're planning on doing right away. Uh, eventually, parents will have access to the portal related to the new student registration system. That way, they can uh, go in and do what normally we do on verification sheets. They'll be able to do online login, change their phone numbers, change their email addresses, those kinds of things that we we ask them to do every year. But for the most part, they're not going to see a lot of information in the portal. If they're going to do it. Okay. I actually have one more follow-up question. It's, it's just pertaining to the um, full-time fifth grade classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. Am I correct to assume that's, that's going to be a ninth 
classroom. Correct. And our student just, numbers. Yeah, oh, and I, I fully support sure. this. I just, where are we going to put them? <laughs> <laughs> We have, we have space, believe it or not, okay. just with some creative um, restructuring, we'll be able to provide um, another classroom okay. for our fifth grade students to help reduce some of the class sizes. Yeah, no, I, and I fully support it. I just want to make sure we have somewhere for them to go. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's awesome. I have that same question, and also to include the guidance counselor, will, will there be a separate office available? for the um, new guidance counselor position? That I haven't thought through entirely yet. Mm -hmm. I think I need to look at the structure of what we're using for what purpose and then make those decisions once I, I know for sure we're moving in that direction. Okay. So. That sounds good and, I, and I'm in total agreement with the um, half permanent sub. I think that consistency is huge. Mm -hmm. To kind of do away with the woohoo, we have a sub today factor. <laughs> actually, be someone from the building that they know, and we know how um, how that all works. So now, thank you for the presentation. I, I, as um, Dorothy said, very thorough and informative, and I think that's the reason why we have a few questions. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> made a short joke and um, he took it right out of my hands I, I was gonna say uh, Matt I appreciate having Matt right here beside me he's I'll tell you one thing I've learned since I took over in July is that I've got a great assistant principal it's a guy who knows every single thing there is to know about Auburn Middle School every single kid um, he loves kids but they respect <laughs> him and um, there's only one thing. He's really tall. <laughs> so every look at that. I mean, every picture I, I'm in with him, my wife always says it's like that movie Twi uh, Twins with Schwarzenegger and DeVito, and I always yeah. say, well, which one's which? <laughs> but anyway, so um, again, I, I do want to thank Matt. So tonight is my first chance to address you formally, and so if I may, I'm going to say a few things that uh, tonight that I won't say every other time. Some thank yous and things of that nature. I promise you that I will not do that every single time I step up here. But there are some things I feel I, I want to say. I'm taking a, a little bit of a different uh, approach. I, coming in from the outside, having had a lot of experience in the middle school level, I think that uh, I'd like to approach this from a standpoint of kind of like where what I see uh, where we are as a school and where we can go as a school and how that ties in with the budget so I'm going to approach it that way and um, certainly if there's something on my presentation or even if it's not that um, you know that you'd like to know more about if I don't uh, touch on it please of course feel free to ask Eric do I just hit this button that goes to the right here yeah, yeah. there we go okay so the first thing I want to say is uh, thank you for the chance to, to be here and to, um, to talk about our proposed budget and to talk to you about some of the things that, that have me pretty excited about Auburn Middle School. I want to thank the people in the central office and this school committee for giving the people at Auburn Middle School the resources necessary uh, to put us in the position that we're in because it's a place that the sky is truly the limit for with the resources that we have and that is a, a credit to all of you. I must also say a thank you, though he's not here, to Joe Gagnon, because Joe, from what I can tell, from what I've seen on the inside, loved that place like he loved his children. And um, along with Matt and a very dedicated and talented staff, he's got this school, in a, we've got this school in a position where it's just got unbelievable p potential. But, you know, we in this room all live in this kind of this place of always like thinking about what's wrong and what's next to fix and so that's what we really have to focus on I don't think that Dr. Brunel wants me to go around just bragging about how great the school is she wants me to to try to make the things better that that I can and so one thing that I've learned over the years is that if you don't have a place where kids feel safe and where kids feel welcome and they know that the adults care about them you really don't have anything in the long run and so the first thing that we're trying to do is take a good culture and make it an unbreakably positive culture, a place that is just 
you just can't break it because the culture is so positive and we have a, a mechanism by which we think we can do that it's something that um, I've had some of this in the past some of it Matt and I kind of worked out over the summer and I want to take a few minutes on this and I won't do this ever again probably but I, I want to do this tonight because this is really the vehicle by which we create an unbreakable culture but of course the every single adult in the school including the parents who come and go uh, have to model this and so that's what we're going to be after and it, it starts with treating everyone all the time with civility and respect it may sound so simple but it's not just because we want it to be a nice place uh, I remember the first time I had a three-point plan years ago and I presented it to my students and I had this one kid and all he was that kid who always said uh, yes Mr. Desto number one yeah why do we have to do that and then uh, number, Mr. Desto on the one that's number two yes well, why should we do that and so I put a why after every one of them so the first one in addition to making the atmosphere a great place when you think about colleges employers high schools what do they rank as the number one thing they're looking for in young people it's the ability to work well with others so it's not really just a nice thing it's also a strategy for the future that sets our kids apart help others when necessary why well as stated above it's been proven that when students are kind and helpful things improve like attendance academic improvement academic achievement um, it's also been scientifically uh, proven to help people's happiness but think about this and Matt will vouch for me that I say this to the students every single day today was the 51st day of school that leaves with 129 days left that's 903 more hours that those kids are going to be together in that school this year if they come to school every day 903 hours so if you were going to be anywhere for 903 hours with anyone you'd want to make it a nice place and not a miserable place and if they go to high school together they're looking at like 6,000 more hours together so they really ought to think about getting along with one another so um, then seeking help for yourself pretty obvious that um, no matter what we do there's going to be adversity in all of our lives and kids need to learn they need to understand that there is some expectation of adversity in your life and you have to learn how to deal with it and the, the best way to do that as a kid is to ask a grown-up who knows how to deal with it and so we have a lot of people there to help them with that and then uh, the last two trying your best to improve academically each day is there because not everybody every kid is is academically geared toward getting straight hundreds but every kid can improve every day and so that's the focus every day is just get a little bit better and involvement in positive school activities uh, just simply the research shows that when kids are involved they love school more and they do better in school and I'm proud to say that we have over 20 extracurricular activities offered at Auburn Middle School so there is truly something for everyone so that's that part of it and that's what we're trying to build at the school and I hope that in a couple of years you'll come in and you'll notice that and you'll feel the difference in the school even though it's already good you'll feel that it's a place that really can't be beat so just to talk a little bit about I, where I feel we are now um, as it relates to accomplishments I know that you know everybody can can see that but I'll just I just want to focus on the let's see um, third fourth fifth third fourth and fifth ones down starting with reading and math support and then below that foreign language is offered in all grade levels and the STEM Academy we call it the STEM Academy and that's media research computer technology technology education and STEM engineering those are courses that are offered so that every student six through eight has the opportunity to take a STEM course at any given time in seventh and eighth grade they take it they take a STEM course all year long so what I want to say about that is 14 years in my previous district I worked to try to get my school to be able to offer those opportunities and I've walked right into it here at Auburn Middle School and so I think that's something that this district should be very proud of that kids it's all about what kids experience in the school over the course of their three years and that they have those opportunities and some of the many others that that we're offering on a daily basis there is just really incredible and it's something to be for everyone in this room to be very proud of except me because I had nothing to do with it <laughs> so I'm just trying not to wreck that part of it um, so now I also just want to note at the bottom it says that all the items do tie directly in with the strategic plan and I use I know it's kind of small from a distance but I just used uh, like uh, HWS health wellness and safety just to touch base uh, on the uh, different parts of the strategic plan so for me um, 
even more exciting is who I believe that we will be. And as I said, we all live in this place where we're constantly reflecting. And even though we say how, how good it is, we're always worried about what it, how it can be better. So I do want to talk for a minute about anticipated accomplishments, including improving academic performance, because that's what we're all about. And another thing that you have to be proud of in Auburn is you have every Tuesday afternoon, the teachers stay for an hour. It's incredible. I, I couldn't believe that. We had them for one Tuesday in my old district. So we think we're making really good use of that time. Uh, we've got departments meeting together to cover content. We've got teams meeting together to talk about individual students and make individual plans for those particular students and that's resulted in some really good actions to help those kids. We have a literacy leadership team through uh, an initiative through the central office through Dr. Lazay with the Hill for Literacy and that team is really fired up right now about their work and just working with the teachers and the teams to try to uh, tackle some of the things our kids didn't do particularly well on on MCAS last year. So we think we have that covered and that we're, you're going to see some, some improvements academically, we hope, we think. Um, we're also looking at that part of the strategic plan which covers social media literacy and, and kids being good digital citizens and we are, we're looking at a, an initiative where we'll have kids producing mini lessons on their own that will go out on the website to their own parents to say uh, essentially but not exactly like this, hey mom and dad look, you know, we're all on Instagram now. <laughs> if you want to know what that's all about, here's, here's what Instagram is, and here's what Snapchat is, and you know, that kind of thing, to kind of teach uh, families how to stay in touch with their kids about, about their digi digital literacy. Um, we're working with the, the school council has agreed to take on a uh, particular initiative this year, and that is to create a consistent and clear guide to homeschool communication for parents. So uh, that will take effect probably the beginning of next year, but um, it's a great group of people that are working on that. As um, many know, we have a new civics curriculum next year, so our eighth graders will have civics, and we're looking at mock elections and town meetings, and we don't know if we're going to be able to do that at this time with the town meeting, but it's something we're going to explore. Um, and then a few other things. I want to jump down to school improvement teams, and just to say quickly that one of the things that I believe is that if you want things to get better. You, you put the people who love the school the most in teams and you let them kind of work on it together and so we have school improvement teams that are working right now uh, to try to improve things and they're all going to give me a plan by May on what we can do better in those categories uh, next year. And so if you can't read them because the letters are small, we have a scheduling team, a discipline team, a staff unity team, social emotional support team, uh, PBIS team and an iPads team which is really uh, their primary goal is going to be to try to streamline the way that iPads are distributed, collected, uh, troublesho troubleshooted, as I don't think that's a word, throughout the year uh, and things of that nature. So, And again all ties in with the strategic plan. Okay, so I just thought I'd mention our class sizes, that our projected class sizes are, are pretty good. Uh, this is a little bit deceiving in that not every class is going to look just like this. Some of the more advanced classes might have 25, um, other classes might have, you know, 16, but on average these are our class sizes by department and it's, it's really uh, pretty solid. So again, uh, everybody in this room had something to do with it besides me and um, we're in solid shape there. Okay, to the, to the budget detail, and I, we actually come out a little bit lower than we were last year. The ones in green and red is where there was any kind of a significant change, so I'll only address those. The green means that we saved money and the red means that we spent more, <laughs> and so, or that we're proposing to spend more. So under commencement, that's our eighth grade graduation, our eighth grade uh, promotional ceremony. We are down $2,000 there. Um, Historically, the school has rented a stage for that, and we think that there's a, a different way we can do that by borrowing things within the district, so we're going to try to do it that way. Uh, classroom supplies are up slightly, uh, and that's because I propose to honor most teacher requests, and this year, the computer tech teacher requests are included in that, which they weren't last year, I think, because his materials were still, a lot of them were still there from the original building project. And then uh, my health, the new health teacher that we have this year is, um, is also included in that. 
and wasn't last year. So that, incorporate, that uh, accounts for the increase. Down to audiovisual supplies, down to 958. We're down a little bit there because we, well, that's what they requested, number one. Mm -hmm. So I just said we can honor the request with a reduction. And guidance supplies, we made the decision to take away one fairly expensive outside presentation. We had a group that would come in and present to the students that we got mixed reviews and we thought we could save some money there and maybe get the same effect by doing it internally. Um, athletic PE supplies are up because they uh, have some supplies that need to be replenished that have worn down over the years. And then finally awards and incentives is up a little bit because I, as part of my goals for this year I want to run an attendance challenge. One of the things I've seen early on this year is a little bit of a laissez-faire attitude around attendance for some of our students and, and their families and I'd like to try to improve that and in so doing there would be like awards and incentives that I would like to like to give. So under personnel we do not have any requests at this time. Um, I just will say though that if there is one area in which I think all of us in the district are in need of support and probably in any district in any school it's the social emotional area and I, I said to somebody I think if we all stick around for 10 or 20 years we might see it get closer to 50 50 academic and support staff because that's the way things seem to be trending that we um, we all need that support so but I have no specific requests at this time and that is pretty much it uh, I want to be sure to thank Dr. Brunel for giving me this opportunity to get back to Mr. Scobie, you'll understand the, um, the analogy. I feel like I'm back in the dugout now, as opposed to being up in the, in the box with the owner. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's what I love to do, and I, I'm just grateful to be here. And I want to thank my fellow principals and leadership team members as well, because they've, been, uh, they've sort of like welcomed me with open arms, and I really appreciate their support too. And there's a little joke about being the new guy. <laughs> Great. Any comments or questions for... Mr. Desto, Mr. Carlson. I, I just have to say, I love the fact that you spoke about how not every student is an A-plus student, and to look at all the students, because um, that's something that is just great from a, a solid B. <laughs> you better than I was. <laughs> C, B. I'm very happy to see that. Thank you. So I have a couple comments and then one question. Sure. So um, first of all, I think it is fantastic that someone is working on a parent communication guide <coughs> bless you for talking them into that i think that that will really help a lot of us because you know even just with the technology i know that my colleagues can you know explain that you know we're still kind of muddling through as parents so streamlining that is fantastic that's um also i'm really impressed that you were able to talk the kids into giving away like the state secrets about how does Snapchat work or whatever? <laughs> what are we even using? Some of the like kids. <laughs> no, but I think that's good. We can certainly yeah. appreciate that. Um, so thanks. I look forward to it. If you have any updates on that, please come back to future meetings. <laughs> and then just my one question was about, I hope this doesn't sound crazy, but uh, the fact that you have no personal requests at this time. Um, I, recent, I, I didn't realize that there was only one nurse. Mm -hmm. At the middle school, do we feel that that's enough? And that might not even fall under his budget. It might come under a different one. But do we feel that you have enough coverage? Because, in my opinion, it, it is enough. I, you know, I think for we have 626 kids at this time, and I don't know what the recommendations are from from the state or anything like that. But I feel like it's a it's a very intense day. There's no question about it. You're, you know, you're, you know, the nurse is hopping around from, you know, there's there's very little downtime. But I do feel as though it can be done and I think it, it's a combination of both you know if working efficiently in that office number one and then also on our end it's helping kids understand that not everything needs to be a nurse visit that sometimes the nurse visit is more of an emotional visit mm -hmm. and, and I'd like to try to get them to try to be able to self-regulate to where they understand the difference like I'm physically injured or sick I go to the nurse if I'm feeling like kind of lousy about something else in life where I'm feeling really anxious or I'm feeling whatever it might be, we have other people to support you with that. And so there's a combination of those two things I think would make that one position uh, enough for our school. Okay. That's my opinion. Okay, no, that's yeah. fair. And then I guess to follow up on that, do you feel like from the social and emotional side, if it is that the, cat, the child's more depressed, then, you know, why do you have a headache? Oh, I had a terrible on a test and I want to go home because I'm embarrassed, whatever. 
do you feel like you have enough support in the guidance department just given you know well we the have three age of your yeah of we have three full-time people and in guidance and then we have the psychologist who's there you know, half the time so 2.5 days per week um, when when she's there we're, we're solid when she's not, I'll admit it, we, we're hustling a little bit, and, and Matt and I do a little bit of counseling at times, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, I'll, the, the straight answer would be, we can make it work with what we have and be successful. Would we like more? Of course. I mean, you, you always want as much support as you can get in that area. But. Great. Thank you for being on. That's all I had. Any other comments or questions? No, I'm not sure. Um, before you even spoke um, about that piece, I was already thinking this, the same thing, is that on the social and emotional um, grounds that you and Matt, I'm sure, co cover a lot of it, as well as uh, knowing personally some of the teachers or having some experience with some of the teachers in that school, um, I'm sure everyone picks up a little bit of the slack. I'm not saying that we couldn't use um, maybe the other half of that um, school psychologist, but I know that the kids are in great hands with you guys and with the entire staff so um, <clears throat> and, I, and I mean that truly when I send my, my child there every day that's exactly what I'm thinking well if, if they were busy in guidance there are plenty of places that they could go to if there were issues and also speaking to that it doesn't change at the high school level I don't know how it is at Auburn but we've got plenty of students who want to go to the nurse just because they're <laughs> not feeling well um, mentally and, and they don't even take advantage of maybe a guidance counsel that is available because I think the nurse is even more comforting sometimes. <laughs> sometimes so. we, train, we train our nurses to be comforting. Yeah. However, I think kids at the middle school age and the high school age, somatic complaints, which you know are medical but psychological, they don't understand the difference always. Yeah. And I think that's why um, you know it would be interesting to see how many medically complex kids you have versus kids who maybe psychiatrically they're having some issues. And that's going to come across as a headache or I'm stressed, I want to go home, but they don't psychologically understand they're stressed and they want to go home, they just understand they want to go home, <laughs> which I think kids like to do. Yeah. So um, it'd be interesting with that. Well, as we see how it plays out um, during this budget season and maybe even beyond that, if, if there wasn't an addition to that since it wasn't even a request, uh, and down the road you find that, you know what, it's getting to be a, a bit of an issue. Maybe we need to go back and talk about it. Um, you know, we're, we're always willing to at least listen. As I look at Dr. Brunel, she's probably thinking, well, where are we supposed to get that money? But no, always let us know because uh, um, we're always willing to, to put forth the extra effort to make things like that happen. And then I had a question um, regarding the school improvement team. First of all, I think that's, that's a great idea. As a district, we, we've got plenty of mechanisms um, in which to try to improve things and um, involving the community and involving parents and involving students. But on the school improvement teams, is that strictly teachers? That particular one, Mr. Scobie, is just, just staff, yes. It's every, every member of our staff. Okay. Yeah, and they, we sent out a survey to see what they felt the topics should be, and then sent out another, and once we got that, sent another one to see which one they'd want to be on so everybody would get their first or second choice. Okay. And uh, so yes, that's just our staff, yeah. That's great, and, and, and nobody knows the building or the children as well as right. the staff, so, so I like that, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about that. Any other comments or questions for these gentlemen? No? Mr. Carlson, you've been standing in the back, but you know, <laughs> yeah. we want to we credit you for being a part of this whole thing as well. I mean, well, it's been amazing. I know. So far. He wants to feel taller, so he makes you stand <laughs> back. Here. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> and I there know it is. Put there just for me because it's a lot. <laughs> I made my piece of this a long time ago. <laughs> Thanks. That was a great presentation. All right. Thank you very appreciate much. It. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, everyone, once again. I was going to bring Eileen up so I could feel shorter, but I'm going <laughs> to keep her right where she is because she looks comfortable. Um, 
I always have the pleasure, it's never failed in 14 years of me doing this, that I bring up the, the, the rear end of these, uh, these presentations. So I, I appreciate your, uh, your time over these, these two nights, as we all do. And I will do my best to not be redundant um, and be brief. So I can turn it over to Dr. Bernal for her closing comments. As you've heard tonight, um, our budgets are developed with our district strategic plan in mind. Um, you know, our mission statement, strengthening connections through rigor, relevance, and relationships. Our vision is to educate and prepare students for the opportunities and challenges of a changing world. And our core values, um, student-centered decision-making, having high expectations for all, um, all of our environments being safe and respectful, responding to needs based on data, providing equitable opportunities, even for those students who aren't the A students, um, and being dedicated to continuous improvement drives everything that we do, and Auburn High School is no exception. My presentation tonight um, uh, takes the five elements of our strategic plan, and what I did was just break out some, some quick uh, bullet points. I won't go into great depth on most of them. Um, you've heard about a lot of this already. Um, but we are in the throes of conducting learning walks, uh, which is helping to calibrate our practice as evaluators um, and is proving to be very valuable uh, to what we do every day. We do have um, NEASC accreditation follow-up, and I'd like to just take this opportunity once again to thank you all sincerely um, for being you know, at, at one or both of the uh, opening or closing ceremonies. Um, as I said to uh, the group, and I think when they left, NEASC is really the opportunity. Um, we spend so much time being focused on standardized testing. Um, NEASC really gives us an opportunity to really look at curriculum instruction and assessment from a different lens. It's the focus on creative problem solving. It's, it's the focus on you know, infusion of 21st century skills. Um, all of the things that don't get as much air, air time in the press um, or, or in the public. Um, so we will have a, a draft report coming from the visiting committee um, shortly. And then once we review that with the, the chair, we'll have the final report probably sometime in spring of 19. And we'll share that with you. Uh, Spencer and Melissa will come back and we'll talk about that with you. But um, it was a great visit and um, you know, we certainly appreciate you know, your support. Uh, it was noted uh, on several occasions by many of the visiting committee members. So thank you. Um, this year, uh, you know, we're also working through uh, a new accountability system with MCAS. Um, we have been breaking that down uh, within the building and identifying, you know, pockets of, of areas we need to improve. Um, it's an accountability process that is uh, unlike anything else in the last 14 or 15 years. And um, we really can't make any comparisons, you know, from a data standpoint to what they call the, the legacy MCAS. Um, MCAS 2.0 is what it's called now. And um, we're working through uh, those issues. The SATs have also changed in the last couple of years, um, and we're also working through those revisions. Uh, advanced placement has revised some of their curriculum um, and expectations and courses, so we're revising that. Um, and we're continuing to offer our students virtual high school and online learning opportunities, and still providing students with our early college opportunities through Quinn Sigmon. So from a teaching and learning standpoint, we're quite busy. Um, as I, I know you already are aware. From a technology standpoint, you've heard this tonight, um, we have a new website that's uh, terrific. We are working through PowerSchool um, as, uh, as is the middle school and to a lesser extent the elementary schools. Uh, we're working with Schoology as our kind of student learning platform and student delivery mechanism. Um, the best way to describe it um, is kind of Google Classroom you know, on steroids. Um, teachers have been working with it and, and absolutely love it. Um, student reaction has also been very positive too, so um, we're happy for that. We continue to use our iPads that, you know, we're very fortunate we have a one-to-one -one iPad program. Uh, we're running hybrid courses um, in our buildings um, and we're also this year for the first time going to be taking MCAS online um, in English and math. So um, we're working to calibrate our systems uh, around that issue. Uh, we had the opportunity last spring to um, test pilot, if you will, um, the English and math MCAS uh, tests, and it went very, very well. Um, I think part of that was because our technology is, is you know, right 
at par where it needs to be. But I also think our youngsters that are coming to us with experience from the middle school of having taken park and other assessments uh, online as well. So um, we will see how that goes when we're doing 220 of them um, in the spring procession. We have our at Auburn Rockets Twitter account that is um, kind of the, the go-to if uh, you want to know anything that's going on um, in the immediate. Um, obviously the one called Communication System and Digital Marquee. All of those things help us support learning communications and operations, um, not only at the high school but across the district. Community partnerships, um, you know, we can't do what we do without the support of the community, um, and we're very much mindful of that. You've heard from my colleagues tonight, you know, the, the vital role that Auburn Youth and Family plays. Um, the tremendous support from the Auburn Chamber of Commerce uh, in their mini grant program. Um, they'll be actually coming around, I think, to, to schools um, in the next couple of weeks to award teachers kind of the publisher's clearinghouse um, style. Uh, and, you know, it's $250, but it's $250 that we didn't have. And the, the things our teachers are doing with that little amount of money is amazing. Uh, so we look forward to those things. David Broder Foundation uh, continues to be a tremendous support uh, to uh, various initiatives, uh, not only in, in my building, but across the district and other buildings as well. Our community scholarship support continues to soar. I think last year it was $125,000. Um, you know, that's up almost $35,000 in the last three or four years. Uh, Amy Sampson, our guidance counsel, one of our guidance counselors at the high school, deserves a lot of credit for her work in bringing in new donors. Um, and that's all money that goes right out to our kids at graduation. You've heard about Special Olympics um, and our Unified Sports Program. That's a tremendous community partnership that, you know, has just really taken off. Um, uh, our Evolve program uh, with Mrs. Reedy, uh, our, our sub-separate uh, students in grades 11 and 12, and, and then those who are postgraduates who are out in the community, you know, making those connections in the job uh, workforce. And, um, you know, you heard, uh, I think, Dr. Chamberlain tonight, uh, I'll mention the Worcester County District Attorney's Office. Um, they do a lot for us um, that I don't think people recognize, you know, at, at the high school level. Um, they come to uh, our parents' night. They do a, what they call a hidden in plain sight presentation. They educate parents as they're walking through um, parents' night about things that you might think is just standard fare in your child's class or in your child's bedroom. Um, but in fact, when you look a little deeper, it's much more than that. It might be containing drugs or, or other things that aren't healthy. Uh, they sit with us and do a, a round table once a month that Eileen attends. Um, with representatives from the district attorney's office, there was the police department, other area agencies, you know, just debriefing about local trends in school safety and things to keep an eye on. Um, and they provide us with, with educational materials. Most recently, I just set out a communication on Friday night to families about vaping, jewels, um, you know, what are they? What are the frequently asked questions? How do you start a conversation with your child about that? Um, and so they, they deserve a lot of credit. And they do so much more for us, but um, they're a tremendous asset uh, to us as a, as a community partner. And then the town of Auburn, uh, you know, I, I can't say it enough, and I know you've heard it already, but, you know, the, the support we get from town meeting, the support we get from finance, from selectmen, um, from you, uh, local businesses, uh, it, it's really, it's, it's amazing. <coughs> um, and, and we're very, very thankful that we, we have those relationships and we're always seeking to advance those into other areas. Health, wellness, and safety, you've, you heard Allie talk about our ALICE training initiative. That's been going on in the high school the last couple of days. You know, bullying and harassment education, mental health awareness and promotion with our kids, alcohol, drug education, social emotional awareness, um, a rocket fuel leadership program that we have that our student council started that went down and they trained middle school students. Um, that continues and then our care program that we use in grades three, four, and five, um, you know, are all things that we're continuing to develop and incorporate um, beneath us. And then lastly, the transitions piece. It's always about transitions and making those strong and supportive. This year we're doing something called, uh, what I'm calling it, combo clubs. We're trying to match up our high school clubs with their sister clubs at the middle school and have that collaboration 6 through 12. Huh? Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a wonderful collaboration between you know our art programs. Um, we have obviously our student councils are already in touch. Um, our best buddies programs and our sister program at the middle school are in touch. 
we're trying to foster um, those those clubs to build those connections earlier and get our kids excited in with hopefully uh, older mentors that will be great role models for our kids. Um, the eighth grade transition experience, you've heard me talk about that in the past. Our freshman year experience for our ninth graders, they just went to Mount Wachusett uh, two weeks ago, had a great time. Uh, tomorrow they're actually having a workshop on cyberbullying and cyber safety. Um, and this year, um, under Dr. Lauze and Dr. Brunel's support, um, we're bringing restorative justice practices into the school. Um, one of the ones that we've started with our freshmen is what we call restorative circles. And our kids essentially are sitting with uh, two faculty members and they're talking about different um, issues that uh, the teachers sit in and design together. There's a group of 20 of them. We have 10 freshman home bases and um, they give the students an opportunity to each have a turn to speak about whatever the theme is, you know, that's being discussed at the moment. Um, that goes back to, I think, something that I've, I've talked with you about before. We know that the, the, the best way to make sure, to try to prevent anything um, from going on in our high schools or any school is to make sure that kids have those one-to-one -one connections with each other, but also with trusted adults. Um, and we're looking, so we're kind of piloting that now. It's, it's off to a pretty good start. We're continuing our work um, uh, with this going into the, the new year and I suspect we will carry it forward into subsequent years. Uh, we have guidance groups 9 through uh, 12 where our guidance counselors are meeting with all of our kids to talk about various social, emotional, and academic issues. And then for our seniors in terms of again transition, whether it's college, work, the military, whatever it is that's in their future, we want to make sure that they're prepared in the very best way that they can be. Um, so that's just kind of a quick snapshot of a lot that goes on at, at AHS. Um, in terms of budget, um, it's not really, um, it's not really much different than it has been in previous years. There are a few things here that when you look at the line items, you know, principal's dues are up a little bit. Um, you know, graphics is up a little bit. Um, athletic phys ed is up a little bit because if they need some new equipment that's tied to replace some tired equipment um, you know overall from a, a, a supply standpoint um, you know we're up a couple thousand dollars but it's it's pretty pretty vanilla um, we're not requesting any new positions um, we are just looking to um, you know get the gas tanks filled again in May and keep going with what we're doing. Great. Any comments or questions for Mr. Hanfield? So I just wanted to congratulate you on what was a fantastic summary at the end of the NES. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I was full. I mean, <clears throat> you could see how much time and effort and pride that your staff took in their performance during yeah. and all the work that you've done for years leading up to that. So I don't know. It just yeah, all credit, all credit goes to them. They they did a terrific job, and um, a fantastic leadership as well. Well, so. I appreciate that, um, but without them, nothing works. So, but thank you, I appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, or questions? I have one. Sure. When the um, art supervisor was here, mm -hmm. they talked about adding an art teacher. Indeed. To the high school. They did. But it sounds like it would be more than just art. It would be technology, using mm -hmm. art, and other things. Yeah. Um, would that increase, well that personnel would increase the budget and would art supplies have to go up too to support that position? Well hypothetically speaking if that was a position that was in the budget, um, I, I understood their comments last evening to be down the road, they're projecting out for that position, um, not something that, that I'm endorsing um, at this time. At this time. Oh, okay. um, I'm not opposed to it. But I think, you know, as I've said to you in, in other committees, you know, in, in many years gone by, you know, we have to bring forward a fiscally responsible budget to the town of Auburn. Um, to not do so is not realistic, but it's also not right. Um, you know, as Mr. Desto said, and, um, you know, there are a plethora of needs in our district. 
Um, but one of the things that I think we as a group pride ourselves on is only coming to you with those things that we feel are mission critical to give our kids the very best education that they deserve. And so, um, you know, again, I, would I love to add, you know, another art teacher and add, you know, digital and, you know, photography and, and other things and give our kids those, you know, uh, other opportunities without question. But I think the budgets that you've heard thus far, and I'm the last one, unless Dr. Brunel's going to wrap it up, um, you know, there are is, there is significant needs across the district, more so at, at the K-5 to level. Um, and, you know, when we sit and develop our budgets, we're very mindful of that. And I think that's one of the things, you know, Eric said last night, he hit it right on the head. We work very well together and very collaboratively. Um, you know, I'm very mindful of the fact that they have needs and those needs need to be met. And if it's a, a, a situation where it's, you know, a digital photography art teacher or another guidance counselor in grade five, <clears throat> I'm going to yield to the guidance counselor in grade five. Um, because to not do that, we'd be bringing forward a budget of five, six percent, and that just not sustainable. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Yes, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I was, I was, um, I believe I heard correctly last night that that was something down the road. Um, but you know, as Mr. Scobie said earlier, certainly we could talk about that, you know, for future budgets. But it's not yeah. something that I think is a priority for next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Casey, I'm. Mr. Hanfield, mm -hmm. Mr. Casey. I answered most anything. I just want to, right. uh, no, I, I'm just glad that, that you also mentioned the town. And, and, and as you talk about being there um, for your colleagues and making sure that they're getting what they need, um, being able to fulfill um, their needs and, you know, maybe not looking at some of these additional positions, but you also mentioned the town. I always like to take every opportunity to do the same. The residents, um, the businesses, you know, be, being fiscally responsible also means not trying to draw too much from them, but when we need them, they're always there. And, and I'm glad that, that you mentioned that because I'm sure that that means a lot to them as it does to me. We're definitely all on the same page with that. We want as much and we want the best for our students, but at the same time, we know that the town has needs. The other departments have needs, mm -hmm. as do the residents who are struggling. So, Without question. And, you know, obviously being a resident here, you know, I, I see that. Um, you know, as well as, as all of you do. Um, but I think the other part of this too, though, is, and, and it really, this is another kind of unintended consequence, positive consequence of, of the learning walks, is that me as a high school principal, right, if I'm not in these buildings taking these learning walks, I'm not necessarily seeing that child that's in crisis. I'm not necessarily observing, you know, some of the struggles and strains that, you know, those teachers down there are going through. And so when I walk out of a building, and I know my colleagues do the same thing, when I walk out of a building, sometimes I scratch my head and say, how do they do what they do? You know, and yes, we are very well provisioned and we're very well supported. But, you know, especially around the social emotional stuff, it's just getting more and more and more. Um, so I think that's also lended itself to give us all insight into each other's individual needs and where the priorities need to be. So that's great. Well said. Great yeah, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, again, and thank you first and foremost to all the leadership team members who presented their budgetary request for FY20. So as I started last night, the Auburn Public Schools is comprised of five schools, but most importantly, it's the people in them, not only those in the room here, our staff, but most especially our students that number just over 2,600 this year. As we've done since 2008, our core values have driven the decisions as well as our mission and vision, but it's been against the backdrop of the question, how will this impact students and their achievement? And I think that you've heard through last night in tonight's presentations that what the principals and leadership team members have put forward are answers to those questions, how we can best impact our students and their achievement. So as you know, our strategic plan plays a big role 
not only in our day-to-day -day decision making, but also in the creation of our budget. This really is the driving force because it represents what the people of Auburn, not only in our schools, but across the Auburn community said, we believe this is what we need to keep the Auburn Public Schools moving forward. And of course, we focused on our shared core values, our mission, and our vision. All of the work that we do each day, including budget creation, is about our students. And as I shared with you last night, we want to make sure that we provide our students with opportunities for them to excel academically, athletically, artistically, and musically. We want them to engage in community service. We want them to give back. We want them to be good friends and good citizens. We want them to be kind individuals. We want them to be good human beings. And we believe we pay, we play a vital role in that development. But I think it's important just as some facts for us to really kind of ground who we are in the Auburn Public Schools. And they really don't define us, but I think it's information that's important for us to know. So in the Auburn Public Schools, this shows the uh, percentage of students in free and reduced lunch, and it varies slightly by our schools. But as a district, 27%, or nearly a third of our students' families qualify for free or reduced lunch. It's a point of information that I think we need to be aware of. Additionally, this is our enrollment total. If we look from 2008 to 2018, and these are our, our October 1st counts, we can see over that 10-year period that we have 267 more students than we did in 2008. Now, granted, we have some school choice students in there, but we use to the fullest extent the monies that we receive as offsets. So it's a net gain of 185 students. But if you look in those early years, from 2009 to 2012, we actually saw a decline in our overall enrollment by 66 students. Now, conversely, in the past several years, so from 2012 to the current year, we've actually seen an increase of 292 students. So the Auburn Public Schools is a district that is growing, which is unlike many districts across the Commonwealth. And you've heard in presentations again tonight and last night about the social emotional needs of our students, not unlike those from students in districts across the Commonwealth, and dare I say probably the nation. But we believe as a district that we really need to embed these skills of self-regulation and, and relationship building, helping students to really work together in teams and have empathy for others, are important things to do so that they can embrace the opportunities that we provide them that are academic, athletic, social, um, artistic, and musical as well. The priorities that were set by the school committee as well as the leadership team, it's important to highlight that we have addressed those through these budget requests. So in terms of student safety, the social emotional needs of our students you've heard, we're looking to put a counselor at Swanson as well as bringing forward two social emotional support professionals as yet undetermined. We need to continue to work as a leadership team, what that might look like in those roles. And those individuals would support district-wide. We also have IEPs that require ABA and IA support in this budget reflects it. We have an increase of three ABAs. And then also this funding in here to continue to implement recommendations of our safety advisory team, safety of our students being paramount. In terms of student achievement, so reflected in the budget request is for a grade five teacher at Swanson, but we will actually be adding a grade three teacher there as well. If you remember last year, you approved adding what was then a need for a first grade teacher at Bryn Mawr, followed the kids to grade two, and so a third grade will move up to Swanton Road as well. That being to meet your expectation of having less than 25 students at the elementary level. We are looking to add an EL tutor. We have a growing population of EL students under um, Dr. Lose, and they need to be able to implement the required time expectations as set by DESE. We want to continue our early college opportunities, our preschool opportunities with that sliding fee that continues to, put, to support families that need that. We want to continue our beyond the school day and beyond the school year opportunities. Our, our buildings are, are bustling throughout the year. And also the IA and ABA support for our unified arts programs that we have in place. Class size of address, we want to make sure, and you've seen evidence from other schools, to make sure that we are staying at appropriate levels. 
and technology is something that the town and the district have um, invested in heavily and we are proud to say that we are one to one 24 7 grades 6 through 12 one to one grades 3 through 5 during the school day and basically a one to two environment at PAC and Bryn Mawr schools our textbooks we want to make sure that we're staying up to date with our textbooks and the priority in this budget budget for FY 20 is around social studies and then as many of the administrators um, noted ed educator evaluation so we are always looking those of us in the room <laughs> but those back in our classrooms too to always be tw trying to refine our practice so that our kids get the best benefit of the teachers that have before them and the learning walks is a great opportunity for us as evaluators to calibrate our practice professional development we believe that just as we need to provide opportunities for our students we likewise need to provide opportunities for our staff and there is amp there are ample funds in this budget in order to continue to uh, the great work that has been ongoing in a number of different areas and then the strategic plan implementation this budget strongly reflects the requests and um, priorities set by those individuals in the smaller design team that continues its work so overall we are requesting just shy of three hundred forty thousand dollars or 9.0 FTEs of new position full-time equivalents the grade 5 teacher a counselor at Swiss three ABA's and a half-time permanent sub at Bryn Mawr half-time permanent sub at PAC the appendix C stipend to continue the strings program which would be beyond the school day up at the middle school an EL tutor and then the two social emotional support professionals that would be district wide important to note is over 2.7 million dollars has been shaved from the bottom line budget that I'll share with you soon this being done from every available offset place that we could find whether it's grants revolving accounts Medicaid receipts building rent on all in an effort to truly be as I said last night part of a team that we are here as leadership and that we are as Auburn Public Schools with all of you and those in our schools but as a greater Auburn community to really work in hand in hand with them so the overall request for FY 20 is twenty six million nine hundred nine thousand eight hundred sixty three dollars which represents a four point one percent increase over the approved FY 19 budget request some assumptions I'll just highlight quickly <clears throat> we've used our October 1st count so there will be some fluctuation as always we've had new movements and we've had some students withdraw we've represented offsets for all of our grants revolving accounts and such we've used our Medicaid receipts anticipating 185,000 again we've used a circuit breaker offset of just over $291,000 and maintenance of school choice slots we also have kept our IAs and ABAs when you look in your budget packets this evening and over the next couple of weeks kept our IAs and ABAs in their current position but they will move with students as students needs demand we have 11 regular ed buses we're assuming the bus fee would stay in place as we've used an offset in that and we've used offsets in our revolving accounts satellite galaxy and rental Additionally, important to note is the oil bid is anticipated to be received in late November. That may impact our budget, hopefully positively. We built in a, a slight potential increase in there. That could be an area where we may be able to make a, a slight reduction. The solar panels on the middle school and high school roofs, that project is, as they say, on the one yard line. But we have been very cautious in anticipating any savings in that. And the reason being, New England being what it is, the timeline being uncertain at this point, we really can't make an assumption that we're going to have savings in that and then be left short next year. So we may be able to come back with you in the spring, but we want to wait and take a um, very cautious approach in that. And then also, as, as noted by principals in most cases and leadership team, most of our supply lines were level funded are very close there too. So in terms of next steps, this concludes our budget presentations tonight, November 28th. The town will do their budget kickoff. Governor, pa um, Governor Baker, excuse me, his Chapter 70 numbers are anticipated generally in late January or thereabouts. We have school committee meetings on uh, two in December, the 5th and 19th, and another one on January 9th. And if you remember, 
we need to submit a draft budget to Town Manager Jacobson by January 14th, so that allows ample time. So we'll put this budget on the upcoming school committee agendas for continued discussion. And a quote that I shared, I, I can't take credit for it, it's, it's one by uh, Michael Jordan, but I shared this with leadership team um, before, and it is with sincerity that I say to you that we have an amazing leadership team in place, and, and that is to take nothing away from the teachers in our buildings, the support staff, and custodians, cafeteria, the whole thing, because it, everyone needs to be involved in order to make it work. But I think that this really speaks to what we believe, that talent wins games, but it's teamwork and real intelligence and thoughtful planning and, and being deliberate in our action that really wins championships. And, and this is not a game for anybody, most especially for our students, and why we take it all as seriously as we do. So Steve Jobs, to leave you with one quote, says, be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected, but I'm very pleased to say as superintendent, the Auburn Public Schools is an area where, where excellence is expected. And through your support, and the support we receive from the town of Auburn, I think we're able to deliver that to our students and it's our goal through this budget to be able to continue to do so. So thank you and pardon me for what is either allergies or a cold, so my apologies. <laughs> thank you for that um, and thank you all. Um, any um, closing um, statements or questions before we wrap things up? Um, why don't we just start down one end and, and work our way back if, if you don't mind. Um, so, I mean, social emotional learning is my baby so mm. I like to see that we're adding those two positions my question is are we going to research suggests that social emotional learning works best when it's really embedded into the classroom mm. so having once a week sessions of social emotional learning as wonderful as it is mm. isn't going to make the change um, will there be maybe part of that um, that position's workload or what or description to then train the teachers on how to utilize social emotional learning in the classroom on a daily basis. So we believe, as you do, that it really, it can't be separate from, from it's not a distinct um, curriculum to, to be taught. There are facets of it that certainly can be taught to students, but we think that through the guidance counselors, we actually have a social emotional team uh, mm -hmm. headed up by Dr. Lose of leadership team members that is working on this very, this very issue. We have for a long time in the district in, embedded the PBIS, Positive Behavioral mm -hmm. Interventions and Supports. We have the second step program. So we believe too that it needs to be embedded. Some of the positions that we have added, while they could certainly help to refine what we do in classrooms, may actually help to support some of what we would call our tier three students. Those students who are in, in more of a crisis, um, who really need to get some direction to get brought back to a center place. So it's really going to be a, a, a varied approach that we're going to take. So it, it has to pervade everything that we do in classrooms and with every member of our staff. And these individuals, while they can certainly help our teachers, they would probably be focused greatly on students on and their needs. Who already have the social Correct. Correct. Yeah. Still being worked out, though. Still being oh. worked out. Thank you. So I know I've peppered all of you with many questions over the past two nights, so I'll spare you, but I just want to thank you for your time and thank you for how much thought uh, that you put into your presentations, you know, especially for those of us who haven't made it to the high school yet with our own kids. Um, it really <laughs> helps us to have a lot of insight into what's going on into each building. Um, and we just appreciate your time. I know it's been two really long nights. So <laughs> thank you. And I just want to say thank you. I'm just mulling things over now, so. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to make a couple points here. Uh, like Mr. Hanfield said, I, I truly feel like you guys come here asking for the mission critical stuff. Um, it's the bare bones, it's the essentials. Um, you guys do the best you can with what you have at Pakachog. You guys made that preschool work and it all came together nicely. Um, you know, there might be bumps in the road or whatever, but you guys just kind of handle it with ease. Uh, at Bryn Mawr, you guys are always utilizing your space the best you can when we do those walks. It <laughs> breaks my heart, actually. <laughs> um, if we could add another level, you know, onto that school, it would be great, but obviously we can't do that. Um, and the same thing at Swiss, you know, the, 
I'm concerned about adding the two classrooms. Um, I'm concerned about fifth graders being so large in size and the lunchroom and you know up and down the stairways. I am concerned about that, but I also know that you'll figure out a way to do it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think down the road, I want to see more on that and how you know the plans mm -hmm. that and how that's going to play sure. out. I think. Yeah. Um, but thank you guys. Those were great presentations, and um, I really appreciate everything you guys do. So um, great comments, and I'll just echo the sentiments um, of the committee. Um, I'm, I'm in total agreement with with all of that, and um, I think the presentations were great. I know that you put your heart and soul not only into the presentations, um, but what you do day to day, and 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 that's greatly appreciated. And as Gail said, we're, we're going to mull this over. And um, hopefully we can we can give you everything that you want because we know that you're not reaching um, for for too much. We know that mm -hmm. as as Ms. Sarrington said, it's it's the basic necessity. So whatever we can do, and if it doesn't happen, please know that if we could give you the you know we could give you the sky, that's what we'd give you because we know that it's going to a good place, and, and we know it's directly affecting our students because that's what you're all great at. And um, just once again, thank you for the great presentations. Thank you for caring about our children the way that you do. And um, I, if there's nothing else, I guess you're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to stick around. Is it Mary? Oh, yeah, no, I'm just shutting mine off. Thank you, Greg. Hey, my daughter mentioned something about a no shave policy for November. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to look like Molly Crew again. Bye, Bye guys. Uh, should be. Thank you. Thank you. I always hate you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I do like the issue too. Good night. Yeah, it oh, makes it nice. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good night. Thank you too. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Oh boy. Oh, I downloaded okay. the app. Oh, you like it? Oh, I love it. Oh, good. I had nothing to do with it. We well, just, it just um, it was part of the site. But it was well, I like cool. it. Yeah, awesome. I haven't really done anything. Oh, it's nice to have. Yeah. We have lots of apps now. Still trying to fancy. Presentation before <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Nice oh, okay. still dragging you know, that along. Yes. I know you're really excited about it. It's going to work. If I can be brief. Oh, yeah, that would be great. You made Eric come <laughs> um, we will now revert back to um, teaching and learning. Dr. Lose has a small presentation for us. Small but wonderful, I'm sure. Real quick before she starts. Um, you know, looking at their needs and their wants, I don't know what we could shave off that. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, it's really critical stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, when we go before the town, mm -hmm. just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to sway very much. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it went up because prices have gone up, right. which yeah. isn't anybody's fault. You know, and IEPs and we're filling those needs. I mean, that's really beyond our control. Mm -hmm. That's what's best for our students mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. the students around them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could even just not wavering on things like the in building subs mm -hmm. on the credentials that we want those mm -hmm. folks to mm -hmm. have. Um, I think that is like just, we need to dig our heels in on that in particular, you know, because that's essentially a teaching position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. Through the yeah. chair, I think it is is real very realistic to expect that we would be able to hire someone with a teaching degree at the primary or the elementary level um, based on it, it. It would be a fantastic opportunity for an individual who does not secure a job, who would be able to come here and get his or her foot in the door, yeah. learn everything. I mean, it's a perfect opportunity, so. I have to say through the chair, being the first time I've seen this, how great it is that they work so well together, mm -hmm. that the, you know, upper um, schools can say, we can we can wait mm -hmm. on this stuff mm -hmm. because these schools need better. And, um, the idea of learning walks it, it really makes sense yeah. now. Yeah. Why they have to do them and the importance of them. Yeah, we've been I've been watching this for for mm -hmm. six years now, and obviously I don't see what happens um, behind the scenes. But for them to come out and talk about it um, publicly, um, mm -hmm. how they look out for for one another, it's it is impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And without further ado, that's <laughs> Jose. Okay, and I'll apologize up front if I start coughing. I still seem to have a little cold going on as well. 
So this evening, I just wanted to provide you with a very brief snapshot of Auburn's 2018 MCAS and MCAS 2.0 scores, as well as share a bit about the changes that have been made to the accountability system that Mr. Hanfield referred to earlier in his presentation. So as you know, Massachusetts really has been moving towards a completely computer-based assessment system. And last year, across the Commonwealth, students in grades 4, 5, 7, and 8 were all required to take the math and EL A MCAS 2.0 test on the computer. We in Auburn have been doing that since its inception to give our students more opportunities to practice. But it had been a choice along the way. But finally last year, they did determine that some grades must do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, science was also administered to grades 5 and 8 on the computer, but it was still the old legacy version. So there's an MCAS version, which is called the legacy version, and the MCAS 2.0. This spring, however, all tests will be administered at all grades on the computer, including grade 10, and our science assessment will now move to the next gen standards for our students. So I just want to go back and review for you what the old MCAS levels were. If you recall, some of you, they were advanced, proficient, needs improvement, and warning. So some of our students still took those last year, so I wanted to share with you the scores we got across the district in terms of the percentage of students scoring at the advanced and proficient levels. So the blue is the Auburn scores, and the gray are the state scores. And as you can see, as far as science goes, and then our high, high, high school ELA and math, we scored at or above the state level in terms of the percentage of students scoring at those two Excuse levels. Excuse me, Kathy, would you explain that again? Because I was looking at the top, but it's not the top, right? It's down. So at grade five, we only gave the legacy science test. So you can see that the state, the percentage of students scoring at advanced and proficient was 48 but in Auburn we had 68% of our students score at the advanced and proficient level oh, okay. in science. And the same for the 8th grade because that's the only legacy version that they took. The high school, however, all of their testing were, were legacy versions and so you see that the ELA at Auburn High School came out at the state average in terms of advanced and proficient. The math was above in terms of advanced and proficient and science was above. Some of those are significantly above as well. Oh, okay. We have moved to the MCAS 2.0, and those achievement levels are entirely different. So if you want to take a minute to look through here, we have the exceeding expectations, meeting expectations, partially meeting expectations, and not meeting expectations. And they ask that we not make any comparison to the legacy levels, because the scaled scores and the cutoff scores are all different. <coughs> And here are our scores from grades 3 to 8 in terms of the percentage of students exceeding and meeting that level. So we have the blue, which is Auburn, so you can take a look at that, and the gray, again, is the state. So in 9 out of these 12 areas, we were at or above in terms of the percentage of students exceeding and meeting. There were three areas where we weren't. We we're well aware of that. And so, as I talked to you the other evening around the PD that happened, principals have been planning with their staffs, so a couple of the action steps that they're preliminary putting in place is work around constructed responses, which are really difficult for kids. They're also looking at helping kids improve in solving multi-step mathematics problems. They also identified reading comprehension, as always, as an issue to continue to work on, because that affects every area that we test. I do want to share some highlights, though, that I always find in the TNG. There's always something good you can find in there. <laughs> so out of 56 school districts that were reported with the same grades, <coughs> similar to Aubin's, we had more students at grade 3 scoring at the exceeding expectations than 52 other districts. So we have some pretty smart kids. And at fourth grade, we had 45 out of the 56 having more students that scored at the exceeding expectations, and in fifth grade, 50 out of 56, all scoring at the more at the exceeding expectation. So I think that's really great that we are scoring at that top level for a lot of our students. 
want to transition a little bit into the accountability changes. So as Mr. Hanfield mentioned, there are some significant changes to this. So accountability changes here. Some of the things that they are now doing, are they are adding additional indicators. Their goal of that is not only to capture our students' achievement <coughs> and performance, but also to capture what are the opportunities we're offering students beyond test scores. Some of that might be higher level courses. It's a lot about attendance graduation rate and things like that and I will show you a little bit later what those are. This new accountability system includes normative as well as criterion reference components and they're going to have us show progress toward targets around the aggregate as a whole but also our lowest performing students as well as subgroups and EL students as well. And again it's all about raising the performance of our lowest performing students but also as the school as a whole. In the past, we would get a rating of level one school, level two school, level three, four, or five. Remember us reporting on those. They no longer will do that. There will be different levels. And it's more about the progress you're making towards meeting the goals and the level of assistance you're going to need from DESE based on that. And also in the past, what they would do, the district would get the level ranking of the lowest performing school in the district. So you could have four level ones and one level two, and the district would be ranked as a level two. They are dis discontinuing that, and they're actually going to look at the data across the district and give us a ranking. So these are some of the indicators I was talking about. <coughs> so this is for non-high schools, for our K-8 to schools. They're still going to include the achievement, the English language arts, of course, the math, the science, they're going to look at student growth again, but they're now looking at English language proficiency for our EL students. Every EL student is going to have a target in terms of getting them to proficient within six years. Their base will be their baseline access test, the grade level, and then how many years have been in Massachusetts, and each student will have a different trajectory, and the district needs to try to meet those targets. Other indicators are around chronic absenteeism, percentage of students missing 10% or more, and then they will set a goal each year that you're supposed to bring that number down and you earn points towards that. These are the accountability indicators in the high schools. There are a few more. They still have the achievement, they still have the growth, they look at the high school graduation, they look at the English proficiency, they look at the chronic absenteeism, but they're also looking at what percentage of our 11th and 12th graders are completing high level courses. There's about five pages of courses that qualify for that. AP courses, of course, international baccalaureate courses do that. Um, the AP courses range from the art courses, the music courses, to foreign language, to calculus, to physics, so there's a broad range of courses that will qualify for this. And the scoring system, actually, the point system goes from zero to four. And when they set these targets, zero is that you've declined, one is that there was no change, two is that you've made some progress, three is that you met your target, and four is that you've exceeded your target. And they award you for every indicator where you fall on your targets, and then they average those up. And they have a different weighting system as well. So this year, <clears throat> they really only looked at our performance against targets in two areas or declared it in two areas. They either determined us that people at our districts as meeting and partially meeting. So it's interesting that 85% of schools were classified as not needing assistance or intervention with only 15% of schools <coughs> requiring any assistance or intervention. Next year, however, they're going to have meeting, partially meeting, and not meeting as well. So because they didn't have a lot of data this year, they decided to only look and rank you in either of those two. So I will share with you what our school accountabilities are presently. So Auburn Middle School, which was partially meeting, is not requiring assistance. Auburn Senior High, partially meeting, not requiring assistance. The two schools, Bermar and Pack, do not assess, so they have insufficient data in Swanson Road, partially meeting and not requiring assistance or intervention. And the district, across the whole district, when they looked at all of our data, same ratings, partially meeting targets and not needing assistance or intervention. So considering this is really the first time we're doing this accountability system, we feel okay. 
And I just want to caution everybody because it's really easy to make comparisons to what we used to know. DESE has cautioned every district, do not make any comparisons. The data is different. What we're looking at, there's a different additional indicators. We have fewer years of data and there's really no crosswalk. So we are advising everybody not to try to make any comparison. But they encourage us, of course, to use it for internal planning. So I spoke to you a little bit about what the principals are doing <coughs> with their staffs. I know that they did some on the election day. I know they're also meeting with PLCs and grade levels with their, their staff to look at individual student needs, subgroups as well. So they're working really hard to try to plan out what we should do next. We continue to believe that we have to give our students explicit instruction in terms of taking computer-based assessments because sometimes those are a lot different um, than what they're used to doing. And we continue to try to align our curriculum. Recently we saw when we looked at some of these that our geometry standards, students did not do well on that. And so now we're looking at our pacing guides to see where it actually falls in the year. Does it fall after we give MCAS? Does it fall too close to MCAS? Should we start a little early and kind of spiral it in along the way? So a lot of those things are being looked at. So really it was brief, but I do want to close <coughs> just by reminding us all and stating what I know you all believe is that this assessment is only one snapshot of our students' performance. As Dr. Brunel highlighted in her budget presentation and the special guests we had this evening demonstrate, our students demonstrate on a daily basis in a variety of ways how hardworking and high achieving they are. So I know you all agree when we say we are truly very proud of our Robin students. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer because it's new for all of us. <laughs> I have just a quick one. When's testing start again this year, this school year? <coughs> May. May. So they've got till May. Well, that's good. They have till May. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Lose? I have a question. <coughs> have they changed the um, testing structure at all? Where it's I heard something at that Desi presentation in the Cape where it was going to be less hours of mm -hmm. testing. Is that rolling out this year or? I think yeah, every year they look at the amount of time that our students are spending testing and they streamline it a little bit. So I do anticipate we'll see a little bit more of that this year. Any other comments or questions? Um, the chair, just very smart kids in our district. <laughs> yes. Good work by the teachers. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you for Thank that you. presentation. Thanks. Good news. And we now move on to new business. So just a couple of items. The Town Auburn tree lighting will take place on Friday, November 30th. Town Manager Jacobson has asked me to express an in, pass along an invitation to all of you. It begins at 6 o'clock. It's the 7th annual. And then also, uh, we mentioned a couple of times tonight, the school committee tour of schools. <coughs> I had Mrs. Zotner look at my calendar, and these are three potential dates. We are meeting again as a school committee on December 5th. So I don't know if you want to check your calendars or if that's something people want to do. I know last year it ultimately didn't work out, but it's up to you and I'm available if you have any interest in doing that. So We didn't do it last year? No. We ended up changing. I'm not sure if in the chair if there was a yeah, there was a surgery with a number and then I don't know if so or something. It just yeah, it just fell apart and things. Oh, okay. Well I know you'd put down a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, any day is fine with me, but it's funny, I listened to the weather last night and they announced that every Tuesday except for two has had awful weather. <laughs> <laughs> so if it makes any difference, maybe we should avoid Tuesday. <laughs> I don't care. Maybe that's something that we could think about outside of the meeting and, and maybe shoot Dr. Manella a text of you know, what, what might work for you or if you're interested or not interested. I love it. Personally, I, I love the numbers. Yeah, I do too. Okay. And then the upcoming events, uh, it's always busy in our schools, but some literacy nights are coming up. Uh, I think Ryan mentioned there's a Try One concert tomorrow night. There's another one on Monday evening. Um, and do just want to take this opportunity to wish all of you and, and everyone who may be watching in the Auburn community a um, happy Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe it's a week from tomorrow, mm -hmm. quite honestly. Yeah. yeah. 51 days of school already. I couldn't that. Yeah. 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 And is that all that we have for this evening? That is all that we have, yes. All right, well, in that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.